The objective is to find whole number quotients and remainders. Here we have 7 tens, 3 ones, divided by 5. What is 7 tens and 3 ones worth? Write 73. Let's set up the long division, where we're going to go ahead and write our divisor of 5 right on over here. So we have 73 divided by 5. Do we start in the tens place or do we start in the ones place? Right, we start in the tens place, and then so we're dividing those seven tens into five groups. How many tens go in each group? Right, only one. So we have a one there above the seven. One times five is five, where we distributed five tens, and then we subtract to get two. Those are the two remaining tens. What do you do with the two remaining tens? Well, in this case, we will unbundle them and put them together with the three ones to give us how many ones altogether? 23, right? Our next step is to divide these 23 ones into five groups. So 4 will go into each group, with 3 remaining. And I record my remainder. How would I check this? I write my quotient, 14. I multiply it by that divisor of 5. 5 times 4 is 20. Place a 0. Regroup a 2. 5 times 1 is 5 plus 2 is 7, and I remember to add in our remainder of 3, which is 73, and therefore I have had my check there. Here's another problem. I have 5 tens and 3 ones, and I'm dividing by 6. We would start in the tens place. What number is this again? 53, and I'm dividing by... 6. Well, I'm dividing into 6 groups. Can I divide 5 tens into 6 groups? Nope. So, I have to unbundle the 5 tens and put it together with the 3 ones to get how many ones? Right, 53 ones. And then so that's where it is that I work. I'm working to get 53 ones divided into those 6 groups. This is what I'm thinking about, those six groups. Remember our place value chart? So this is what's going in my head right now. I'm thinking, okay, 53 into those six groups. How many is that? Well, let's start with five of them. And five of them into those six groups would give us five times six, which is 30. And then so we're all, oh, well, that's not quite enough yet. We can still distribute some more. That's six of them across each of those six groups. Seven of them across the six groups would be 42. And then we actually even have some more. So how many is that? Let's see. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So there's eight across each of those six groups. That's why we record an eight right above the three in the ones place, because eight times six is 48. And how many remaining do we still have? We have 5 still remaining, and that's why we have a remainder of 5. So again, when we are trying to divide the 5 tens into 6 groups, we couldn't do that. That's why we bundled it up with those 1s. We had to unbundle the tens, that is, to be able to get 50 1s. With the 3 1s was 53, and then that's what it is that we divided, and I was showing my thinking here. And then so, this is what we have here, where that's kind of like a thinking bubble. That's what I thought. I didn't necessarily need to record it, though. We do want to run our check, so we'll take 8, which was our quotient, and we'll multiply by what? 
6. 8 times 6 is 48. Add back in the remainder, which was 5, which was 53. So it checks. 5 tenths, 3 ones, divided by 6, does equal 8 with a remainder of 5. Here we have 63 divided by 4. Your turn to try. Pause that video. Do we work with the 6 or the 3 first? Right, we work with the 6 and the 6 tens. We're dividing 6 tens into 4 groups. We can only put 1 ten in each of those groups. That's why 1 times 4 is 4. We distributed 4 of those tens leaving us with two remaining tens, which we can then look at with the three ones. Two tens and three ones is 23 ones. And at that point, we're taking those 23 ones and we're also distributing them amongst those four groups. When we do that, we end up getting five within each of those groups. Five times four is 20, and 23 minus 20 is three leaving us with three ones, and that is our remainder. If you didn't do your check, pause the video while you run your check. We have our answer and our quotient of 15. We multiply by the divisor of four. Four times five is 20, zero, regroup the two. Four times one is four, plus two is six, and 60 plus three is 63. Here's another problem. We have 72 divided by 4, and we're asked to solve it using that standard algorithm. So we'll set up the long division. Go ahead and write 72 there. That's what we're dividing, or the wholes, and we're dividing it by 4. So we'll start in the tens place, where we're taking the 7, and we're dividing it into those four groups. Those 7 tens divided by 4 is equal to 1 ten. We record it right over the 7, and we're left with 3 tens that we did not distribute. Therefore, we're going to go ahead and bring down the 2. So we have 32. That was the 3 tens with the 2 ones, and we can divide that also by 4 to be able to get 8, because 8 times 4 is 32, and 32 minus 32 is 0. So there's no remainder here. And also, we do run our check. So we would have had 72 divided by 4 does equal 18. And for our check, we're checking to see whether or not 18 is that correct answer or not. We use the inverse operation, where we take our 18, which was our quotient, and we multiply it by 4, which was our divisor. 4 times 8 is 32, 2, regroup a 3, 4 times 1 is 4, plus 3 is 7. There's no remainder to add, and 72 does match there. Therefore, this problem does check.